Hey guys, Culver here. Welcome to another Asia Legends video. Guys, this one will be covering all the factions that we have right here. One specific epic out of each faction is the one that can carry you through to 21. And I'll be doing this video just to cover that specific epic for each and every one of those factions. Those epics can definitely carry you through to the end. But if you don't have them, there's other epics that can work. Unfortunately, I can't cover every single one of the epics in a single video. So I'll be doing this instead to cover the best one out of each faction and what to do when you have that uh, specific epic. So guys, before we get to the video, very quickly, we're going to do the draw for today, of course, for that uh, ticket for the giveaway at the end of the month. This one will be a special draw just because um, I misspelled the word Fellhound uh, yesterday when I posted that video. I, I spelled it with one L and instead of Fellhound with two L's, I put one L. Just, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> so this one I'll be doing two giveaways instead so one for the correct spelling and one for the spelling that I showed in the video so that I cover everyone possibly who who tried to to comment down below and maybe didn't put the correct word or put the word that I said instead which was the wrong one so I'll put two winners for this one guys uh yeah Let's get into it very quickly. So guys, very quickly, this was the video Fell Hound uh, Easy Mode. I showcased him at level 50 doing the Fire Knight. We had 379 comments and many were fighting on which was the correct spelling, which, yeah, after it was posted, I couldn't go back with it. So uh, I just I just went with this way, two winners instead. So we copied the URL, guys. You need to be subscribed uh, in order to win this. So uh, there's the... <laughs> There's the uh, YouTube URL. We're gonna do a first one with the correct spelling and then we're gonna do it with one L. So get the YouTube comments. Uh, guys, remember the only way that you can enter into this is if you put the correct comment uh, down below and also be subscribed because I'll be checking those after the video. So uh, let's start the raffle and get one for the correct spelling. And it's gonna be, oh, this, this name right here. I used to use Terror Beast instead of Felhound. He put he put the both uh, both of the spellings. Let's put this guy's uh, name in the notepad just to save it for later. And then uh, let's put now the wrong spelling that I put in yesterday. Let's get the YouTube comments. How many are we gonna get, guys? And we got uh, 187. All right, let's get one uh, another one winner, guys. And let's see who it's gonna be. So, Stefane, Viazet, uh, Phil Hunter, Phil Hunter, thank you for the videos. They're very helpful. Good luck, everyone, on the giveaway. All right, guys, I did my best here uh, due to the incorrect spelling. So, I gave out two winners. Possibly people who put both words in there uh, could enter for both. Yeah, it was my mistake, guys. So, guys, for this video, it's going to be very simple. It's going to be just Cold Brew to where it's Cold Brew. You guys know the name of the channel, Cold Brew Gaming. So, it's going to be Cold Brew. That's it. Let's get on with the video. Okay guys, so first up, it's gonna be Banner Lords. Banner Lords, it's a very specific dungeon that we have a very strong epic in there and you guys know who the epic is. He was a reward from uh, the uh, recent battle pass and when I say recent, I mean January or February 2020. And I think it was the only battle pass we're, we're gonna have this year. I don't think they're gonna bring another one. So Stagnite is so powerful guys. He brings a defense down and a decreased attack on everyone. He's also available through shards by the way. So it's not only through that battle pass that we used to have. Uh, so defense down and a decreased attack. Very good at three turns cooldown. He also provides an increased accuracy in case one of your allies gets a resist, which is amazing. And then he's got a decreased speed on his A1. Fantastic kit, great support champion. He definitely deserves a spot in all your all of your teams all the way to 21 unless you got something very crazy with all legendaries but still he's got the only kit or, that really helps get you through those waves and uh, help your team survive actually with that decrease attack so fantastic kit fantastic champion definitely level him up if you're having issues with banner lord so next up it's gonna be high elves guys very similar note to the previous one with the banner lords for high elves Although we have, we can get very strong teams without, you know, epics or legendaries. We can use many of the epics right here. I think the strongest epic, in my opinion, is going to be Tyrell. One of the oldest champion in the games, guys. He used to be number one in terms of wish list for an epic out of shards. He has a defense down on his A2. He's got a way to decrease attack on his A1. 
Uh, he's got a, a way to decrease term meter and also stun through that A3. And then he also has an increased ally defense in all battles by 25%. So this works in Faction Wars as well. Fantastic champion overall, a great kit. He's um, you know, a very wholesome champion in terms of what he can provide to a team, a very good support. He can even do high damage. Like, I mean, in clan boss situations, he's fantastic. So definitely worthwhile champion to take to 60, even if you're just planning to get through Faction Wars and not use any of the other champions again. This one can definitely be used in many other areas. Very, very good champion. Definitely worth uh, getting to 60 and spending those resources. Next up is going to be Sacred Order. Unfortunately, out of the epics, I couldn't really decide out of all of these who's the best one. And I'll go for the Voids, although I don't like Void champions because they're so much harder to get. Cardinal is the MVP and was for my team specifically. She's the one that helped me take down 21 because she has a revive. That revive definitely helped my team uh, get back to its feet after it died. I didn't have a very strong team to survive all the hits from the boss at the end. She's got a revive that also gives them turn meter. Definitely helps at a five turn cooldown. And when you put it, uh, something like a Relentless set on her, she becomes such a great support for Faction Wars with that set. She also has a heal on that A2 and increased defense. And then she also has a way to apply a poison in the case you need like a bit of damage out of her because she's going to be in support gear. This is going to bring some damage out of her that is not based on critical rate, critical damage. So great overall kit, in my opinion, for Faction Wars. In terms of support, you always need a support champion. And out of all these epics, I think she's the best one. Next up, guys, is going to be Barbarians. Barbarians is another one that the epics are not uh, the strongest ones. If you've seen my first video on Barbarians 21, you're going to see that I didn't use an epic. I used one legendary and I used one, one rare and three um, commons to beat it. Just because I, of course, didn't have, uh, like, I think I didn't have Skytouch Shaman, which I think is the best one out of it, all these epics. Definitely High Katoon can help in there with the speed boost. So she's the second option, but the first one is going to be Skytouch Shaman. She's got a great healing potential there for your team uh, with this Bloodstained Ritual. Although it's kind of bad in terms of that fear. She's she's kind of breaking that team down. Uh, she gets feared on her own. It's bad in that way, but in the sense that she can provide a ton of healing to your team. She's the, she's the carry out of the epics, in my opinion. And, and it, she's the one that I would use if I could go back and have to do 21 all over again and would use my epics. And if I didn't have, of course, I'll end there. So definitely uh, Scott is Shaman for that. Again, an epic, uh, a, an epic void, but still um, the best one out of the lot right here. Next up, guys, is going to be Ocarine Tribes. Ocarine Tribes has many options right here. You guys might be thinking I'll go for Maniter, but Maniter, no, he's a void epic again. But Grush, the Mangler, is the MVP out of the epics for Ocarine Tribes. He's a daily login champion. And an all-around faction crypt, you know, uh, amazing champion in my opinion. He's even got an aura just for faction crypt. He's got a way to provide healing to the whole team with that A3. He also can decrease attack uh, debuff on all enemies and a decreased critical damage debuff. Uh, so fantastic way to help your team survive a few more hits in case they just uh, feel like they will get in trouble in getting those attacks. And he also can apply a leech debuff on the target. So Great overall kit. He is the carry out of the Ogryn tribes, in my opinion. That decrease attack can definitely be a clutch. And also healing can also be very beneficial if you're lacking that healing. And there's not many healers out there uh, in this kind of setup. So definitely Grush. And also because of his availability, I mean, yeah, number one. Ne next up is going to be Lizardman, guys. Not many options right here. The one that I'm going to say is the top option is, of course, going to be Basilisk. The reason that I think a Basilisk is is number one, guys, is because of his A1. It's an AoE attack. He can pro, uh, apply an increased attack on himself. That doesn't matter for us. The AoE attack on that A1 means you can put a stun set on him and basically carry yourself through that faction world stage. Getting those RNG lucky stuns can help you get through uh, some of those um, some of those runs that you might be fi finding very difficult. Getting those RNG stuns at an 18% chance to stun can be great. Not only that, he also has a stun on that A2. So that's a very specific stun in, in case you didn't get lucky with that A1 and you want to do a specific stun on a target that's going to ruin your team on the next on the next uh, wave, maybe on the next time he gets uh, full term meter. So it's a great 
great thing that it's also on a three turn cooldown. And then he also has a revive in case he just dies. Six turns uh, cooldown and he also applies a block damage buff on himself. Very great overall champion in my opinion. And can definitely be used in other uh, in other areas as well such as PvP. So there's some people out there who use Basilix for PvP. So next up guys is going to be Sky Skinwalkers. Skywalkers? Skinwalkers. Uh, Skinwalkers is going to be Steel Skull guys. Steel Skull is the one that I choose out of the epics to be the top, top epic out of here. There's many champions in the epic category. He's the only reason, um, he's the only one that takes the, the top spot because of his healing. There's no other healers like him in the epics category right here. He definitely deserves it. He's got a heal on his A2 and a heal on his A3. Definitely becomes clutch when you reach that final stage of the boss and you need the healing to save, save yourself from actually dying, getting those three stars. Definitely go for Steel Skull. He also helps in the clan boss. If you're having, um, if you don't have a good poisoner, he can be a good poisoner with a counter attack team, and he also provides an ally defense faction creeps aura. That's it, guys. And then let's go to the orcs. So the orcs, following the previews, um, all the previews champions that I, I, I covered, guys, you need a support for all the faction ones. You need somebody who heals your team, gets them back together. The only one of the, out of the orcs that can provide that support at a great Great deal, and he's the one that I leveled just for Faction Wars, was Rask, B Rask, or whatever he's called, Rask. He's got a passive that heals all allies by 10% of his max HP when he flicks a critical hit. Very important, get him to 100% crit. Get him with a, a, an HP set or a shield set if you're running also Seer, and he's gonna help your team survive whenever he gets a turn. He hits the enemy, he crits, and he heals them for 10% max HP. With the gear that I had him, I think he was healing for about 6,000 every time he did an attack, which is great. Uh, it's very hard to get that high of healing with from other champions, and especially in the Orcs faction, where it's very difficult to find a healer right here that does that job as good as Vrask will do. Next up, guys, is going to be Demon Spawn. Demon Spawn, of course, has a ton of legendary options right here that can definitely be worth it. But here, guys, I'm, I'm in a bit of a, an issue in finding the top top epic for you to get through stage 21 or all the way through demon spawn. So my first option would be, of course, Umbral. Umbral is so great because she's got two skills that are definitely uh, carry worthy. The one is the provoke and also um, uh, unkillable on herself. So she pro applies a provoke for two turns and then unkillable on herself. She won't die unless she gets the, the buff removed. And she also has a way to apply block buffs. But Guys, we also have the free-to-play option, which is the daily login option, and it's Tainix Hate Flower. I don't have her fully leveled up, so I didn't use her to beat the stage, but she has a way to decrease damage uh, dealt on your allies. She has a way to decrease speed uh, on the target, which helps in terms of the boss once you reach the boss. And then on her A1, guys, tax two times at random, heals all allies by 3% of this champion's HP with each hit on targets under decreased speed debuff. So... That can definitely help carry you through when you're in need, uh, in need of a healing. If you don't have a healer in there, you don't have something like uh, a Duchess that can provide a heal over time uh, through through her revive, then you're going to need healing and she can provide it. She can be the top one if you don't have something like an Umbral, which is a Void Champion. So those two get the top spot, uh, although Umbral is, in my opinion, the top one. Okay, so she's number one. And Tainix is close a second just because of how available she is to everyone. Next up, guys, is going to be Undead Hordes. Undead Hordes, undeniably, the top spot gets Gorgrab. Gorgrab, you need a Reviver, you need a Healer, you need a Speed Booster. He's got all of them. Uh, he's a great champion also in the dungeons. He can be used to get even faster uh, times for all dungeons. So getting him to 60 is not a bad investment uh, because of his quick animations. Some people use him instead of Arbiter, so... You've got also that going in case you want to use him somewhere else. So uh, he's got a great revive on that A3, 5 turn cooldown, but also he uh, heals all allies with it. Fills the turn meter on all allies at a 3 turns cooldown and also provides an increased attack. And that A1 can actually remove buffs from enemies. So great kit overall. I think he definitely deserves it because he can basically bring your uh, team back to life when something bad happens, like everybody dies your uh, weak damage heaters die. So it's very possible you've got a team of all with legendaries because there's so many in the Undead Horde, but 
yeah, out of the epics, he's the best one in my opinion. Dark Elves, guys, is another faction that I thought, okay, we've got so many options here. I don't know who to pick, but there's one and it's a new one that I'll have to say is the top one. Of course, there's Madame Ceres in there. She's great. There's uh, Sylar in there. There's also Luria that I think definitely deserve a very good mention in this video. But the new champion, Caden, is the one that definitely gets a spot as number one just because of his revive. Look at that revive, guys. Revives two random allies with 50% HP and places 60% increased defense buff on them for one turn. Four turns cooldown, such a such a great skill. And she all, he also has a way to decrease attack on all enemies with 100% chance. Uh, three turns cooldown, such a great way to get through those waves. Especially once you reach the boss, you kind of need a way to get back, back up uh, with your team because that boss, I think, applies an HP burn and also does some pretty good hits. So having a reviver can definitely help you get that three stars that you're hoping for and just finish off uh, stage 21 and get those three stars. That's it. Knight's Revenant, guys, is another one that has so many options for epics. And really, the epics are the ones that are going to carry you through this one. The legendaries are very hard to get. We've got three void legendaries in there, one new uh, non-void, and of course the, the best one, uh, I think Tomb Lord, but it's also legendary. Can't really recommend those. So this video was for the epics. The epics here, we've got so many options. We've got Miscreated Monster, who's great. We've got Sinesha. We also have um, Sepulchre Sentinel. We've got Doom Priest, that's also great. We also have Golden Reaper. So many good options right here, guys, but only one deserves the top spot, in my opinion, and it's gonna be Sinesha. Yeah, you guys thought I would say Miscreate Monster. No, Sinesha is the top option right here, guys. She's got an AoE A1, so stun set goes so well on her. She's got a way to heal uh, one of your allies with that A2. She's got a way to equalize HP, so heals everybody with that A3. So if you got somebody who's very healthy, she will equalize everyone to his health, so if he's 100%, everybody will go to 100%. Definitely helps with the boss because the boss changes. Um, he switches around the HP of targets. He gets the lowest one to switch around with him. No, he gets the healthiest one to switch around with him. So uh, your healthiest one actually becomes the lowest one. This can definitely be trouble and get you to lose that three, uh, three stars win for stage 21. She's going to help you through that. And she also has a very nice aura, 30, 31%. Uh, all our HP increase, definitely, definitely worth it, guys. And finally, guys, for Dwarves, uh, to close off the video, it's going to be Rearguard Sergeant. There's very few options right here. Definitely all of them deserve uh, some mention because there's such a few options. you got to try all of them to beat Dwarves, which is uh, kind of hard faction to beat. Rearguard is the one that carries you through. So there's something that actually use two of them to do fast times on stage 21. She's the one that carries you through. She's got a decrease attack on that A2, an ally protection and continuous shield on A3. She's got a force ally HP in all battles by 33%. If you wanna put her in the lead, help her get some more HP. The way to beat it, guys, put her in Immortal and Relentless set. She's definitely gonna be a carry in terms of supporting your team and keeping them uh, alive through that ally protection. And uh, yeah, she is gonna be a carry for you, even if you don't have the legendaries. Definitely worth taking to 60 at least one rearguard surgeon. You don't need two if you don't want to do dupes, but two are definitely going to also make your life so much easier in beating that stage. So guys, this was the video. Top 13 epic champions to beat Faction Wars stage 21. Uh, guys, of course, if you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button and the like button. It really helps me out. It really helps the channel grow. Hoping to get that 20K by the end of the year. So thanks a lot guys for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.